Hi, how you doing? I'm Ty Knife here for TK24 Sports. Now, if you're new to the show, make sure you like, subscribe, turn that notification on so you don't miss the show every time we upload. Now, on today's show, we're looking at the potential game changes. If these ones actually come off, these players from respective club to the respective club, they can make your team potential champions of England, champions of Europe, or back into the top four. So where do we start? None other than Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish plays for Aston Villa currently. Potential move to Manchester City. If they can pull this one off City, they've got a world beater on their hands. Everyone fell in love with Jack Grealish last season. They fell in love with him when he was playing for England in the Euros. Unfortunately, he didn't get that game time to demonstrate just how good he was on one of the biggest stages of a tournament. Now, Jack Grealish plays on the far left and is more of an attacking midfielder. He's more of a carrier of the ball. He draws in a lot of fouls. And this is something that City would love to have. They've now got Phil Foden. They're more, more than likely going to get rid of Bernardo Silva. They've still got Raheem Sterling. They've got Kevin De Bruyne. They've got Gabriel Jesus. But they've lost Sergio Aguero. But they've got a replacement lined up for that one. So we're going to get into that one a bit later on in this show. But back to Jack Grealish. What's he going to bring to City? I think he's going to bring flair, creativity, a bit of swag. And now he's also going to bring in a couple of goals and a few assists. Now, he's not big in these departments, but he's just a magnet. He's a magnet for defenders who come onto him and they just hack him down. He's one of the most fouled players in the league. Now, with a reported fee between 80 to 100 million, it could even rise to 110 and I think that's a bit crazy for Jack. I think the top ceiling, for my my opinion, is between a 70 to 80 million. And I think City just need to stay stay in that sort of you know that sort of realm, and I think they'll get their man. Depends on how much money up front that Villa's going to want is going to determine how this deal is going to get done. Seven and a half out of ten, I'll give this transfer a likelihood of going through. Next on the list is going to be uh, Rafael Varane to uh, from Real Madrid to Manchester United. Now this is going to be a good good deal for Manchester. Manchester United, they've already got Luke Shaw, Juan Pesaka, Maguire. Now adding Varane to that gives them a solid base for a defence. One thing we do know about Varane is that he is not a leader of a defender. He's a good leader in the sense of going for a ball. He's a good leader in the sense of going up there in the sense of challenges for area battle. A good leader in bringing the ball out, but he's not a good leader in communications. Now, Tom, why are you saying all this stuff about leadership? Well, there's leadership in different forms and different qualities. Harry Maguire is an all-round leader. Varane is not. He needed Sergio Ramos next to him to be that leader. Now, Varane will bring something different, though, to United. He'll bring a bit of pace to them. But one thing about him as well is that he's very injury-prone, so United's going to have to watch out for that if they do pull this deal off. Now, with a reported fee of anywhere between 40 to 50 million, it could rise up to 55 million. Just depends on how much United really want him. I believe that their personal agreement have been met. And really, Varane does want to come to the Premier League, but he's showing a bit of respect to Real Madrid as United and Real Madrid do their transfer standoff. Who's going to blink first? And I think United hold all the, all the cards. Varane with what? A report of 12 months left on his contract. He could leave for free next year, and Real Madrid do not want that basically because of their dire state of their financial burden right now. So United have all the cards, they just need to get the right fee. Real Madrid need to feel that they've got a good deal and I'm sure this deal would definitely happen. I'll give this a 9 out of 10 for this one moving forward. Next on the list. Well, none other than James Madison from Leicester to Arsenal. This deal has now had water poured all over it this morning. Why? Because I think the deal is getting closer than they really want it to be. David Ornstein coming out and saying, I don't think Arsenal really have the money to make this deal happen. They're, they're, <laughs> bear in mind, David Ornstein is the guy last couple of seasons ago where he tried to pour cold, cold water over the Nicolas Pepe deal going to Arsenal. Then a couple of weeks later, of course, Pepe's on the plane going to Arsenal. So do I think this deal is going to happen? Yes. What does Madison actually bring to Arsenal? He actually brings goal, flair, swag. He brings a bit more charisma to Arsenal, especially in the creative side of the midfield. He does go score goals from open play. He does score goals from free kicks as well. He takes a good corner, predominantly right-footed. He can play as an attacking midfielder. He can also play wide left. So it gives Arteta more creative options now going forward. So, do I think this deal is going to happen? Yes, I'll give it a solid 9 out of 10 that they will find the perfect deal to make it happen. I think Arteta knows this is the type of player he wants. He's English as well. He's a creative midfielder. He's small and nimble. He can get about the pitch. So, yes, 9 out of 10, I can see this one happening. And I think this one can propel Arsenal 
into the conversation of a top four finish. Next deal, Haaland from Dortmund to Chelsea. Now, this is going to be the trickiest deal out of all the ones I'm going to mention. And why is because Dortmund hold some of the cards. Chelsea hold a bigger piece of this card. Chelsea can actually get this one right down to the wire of that closing of the Premier League transfers window. Now, what do I mean by that? Next season, Haaland can go for £65 million. Chelsea, on the other hand, know that there's going to be big competition next season because, of course, the pandemic is slowly co closing down. It means fans will be entering the stadium again. So the likes of maybe Real Madrid or Barcelona will have a bit more money in their back pocket to get this deal done. Even at 65 minutes, they've only got to sell a couple of players to get this one going. <clears throat> Chelsea, on the other hand, have the money. They've got Roman Abramovich. They can broker this deal if they need to. Yes, they've got to sell a few players, but should they make this one happen, this is going to be a massive deal. They're trying to say that Dortmund won 150 million. Chelsea don't need to spend 150 million to get this man because, you know, Dortmund are in this, you know, precarious situation. If they don't sell for anywhere between, I'll say, 120 to 140, they will lose out tens on twenties and hundreds of millions of pounds getting it still over the line. That means that next season, anyone can come in and spend 65 million. It's, you know, it's, it's in his contract and that's the maximum they're going to get. So Chelsea know this, Dorman actually know this, and I think a deal will be done this season. Wait, maybe towards like three, four days before the transfer window closes and then Haaland will be a Chelsea player. Now, would I give this as a rating? I give it a eight and a half out of 10 that this deal will happen. So watch this space. If he does come in, well done, Chelsea. You've got a great striker on your hand. Could prepare you to win the Premier League and also retain the Champions League. Now, the biggest story, of course, is we're talking about now is Harry Kane potentially leaving Spurs to join Manchester City. The story broke like late last night in the Sun newspaper. Um... Do I believe the story is BS? No. Do I believe the figure is BS? Yes. I believe no City is not going to pay no more than 130 to 150 for this player. How the deal is constructed is down between the two clubs. Daniel Levy is a great businessman. He knows how to get the best deal for his club. Now, are City prepared to give a chunk up front with loads of add-ons? Are they going to find another 110, 120 million up front and then spread the rest across the next three or four seasons? Maybe with add-ons, maybe with a player going in exchange. Who knows? I don't believe that personal terms will be a problem when it comes to Harry Kane and Manchester City. I just believe the biggest problem is going to be between City and Spurs finding a common ground to say, yes, this, you can have this player. We need X amount of money up front. So this one could go down to the wire. I would say three, four games into the Premier League, it could get done. But then again, I think it's best for both parties really and truly to get this deal done now. It doesn't matter that City plays Spurs on the open day of the season and Kane could come back and score some goals. That makes no difference at all. It's better for Spurs to get this money in now so they can go and rebuild very quickly rather than wait, 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 strike a deal and all is, you know, done. I mean, <clears throat> let's say they go to opening day of the season and Harry Kane plays against City. Is he going to give his best? Is he actually going to give his best for Spurs? Still playing. He's still a professional. But then does he want to run the risk of being injured knowing that that could jeopardise a move to City? So Daniel Levy's got to be clever about this. City, I'm sure, going to be clever about this. They'll go and make a, a first opening offer, put the feeders out and say what's going to happen. But then what are City getting as a player? Again, I said that word already. He is pretty injury prone. So we know that already. If you watch Harry Kane in the Premier League, you know that he suffers a lot from injuries, especially from his ankles. But then again, you're now looking at a player that's going to get at least 25 to 30 league, league Premier League goals a season guaranteed at City. He may even go on to get 35 Premier League goals with 15 assists. This is something that Guardiola kind of needs. I think if he had um, the likes of Harry Kane last season in the Champions League final versus Chelsea, they would have done so much better. They've had a better outlet than having Kevin De Bruyne. This then releases Kevin De Bruyne to play behind Harry Kane. They get Jack Grealish on the left and put Raheem Sterling on the right. That's deadly for anyone to actually face and go up against and defend <laughs> week in, week out. So, guys, it's great to be back. Again, if you're new to the show, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on that notification so you don't miss a show every time we upload. Thank you for watching. I'm Ty Knight for TK24 Sports.